Today, I'm gonna to show you how you can take a rubbish looking photo and transform it into a visually stunning cinematic photo like this. And we're gonna do all of that using Lightroom Mobile. And make sure you stick around because right at the end, I got a bonus tip that's gonna take your photo to the next level. Let's do this. So this photo was taken a few months ago by a friend of mine when they took a trip to Vegas. And this photo was actually taken with an iPhone 4S. Yes, you heard me right, iPhone 4S. I mean, the resolution, that's crap. The compression, man, don't get me started on the compression. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, how is he gonna fix that mess? Well, today, I'm gonna show you. Let's get into the tutorial. I'm firing up Lightroom Mobile. Let's get to it. So I'm gonna go over to the crop tool here. So you can see here, the composition on this photo is just not right. I mean, the subject is too far away. There's a lot of distractions going on. I mean, what's going on here? The bottom right here, you've just seen too much of that table. So we're gonna get rid of that. So I'm gonna pinch here at the bottom, just bring it in slightly and then move the subject over. There you go, I'm pretty happy with that. Now I'm gonna hit on this little check mark. There you go, instantly that photo is already starting to look a little bit more cinematic. Now I know that word gets used a lot these days, but you know, there's just no other way to describe it, man. Cinematic. So I'm gonna move over to that light tab now. Now there are some basic sliders here, but I'm not gonna to touch those just yet. But I am gonna adjust the tone curve. I'm just gonna give it a little bit more contrast before we do a bit of color adjustment and grading. So I'm gonna hit on that tone curve icon. There you go. Now I'm just gonna add three points in the middle so we can adjust that whole line there. Now the shadows and the mids, I'm gonna play around a little bit right now. So I'm gonna bring those shadows down slightly, pop up those mids a little bit. So I've got a little bit of an S curve coming on, but I'm gonna, gonna bring up those highlights slightly. Yeah, I'm thinking that's, that's probably where I want it right there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play with the blacks and the whites in this photo. And those whites, I'm gonna bring them down from the top just muddy those up a little bit. And then on the blacks, I'm gonna bring that up slightly, bring that fade into that photo, instantly making it look more cinematic. So we're gonna jump out of this now, and then we're gonna go over to color. And this is where we're gonna do the majority of our work. The first thing you notice is the color balance is off. There's just way too much warmth in this photo. So I'm gonna grab that temperature dial and I'm gonna bring it down to like maybe minus 20, somewhere like that, yeah. I'm not gonna do too much else from here, apart from just maybe slightly increase the vibrance to maybe around 18. But the magic's gonna happen in the next two sections and the first one is mix. So in mix, we got all the different colors in the photo and we can change the hue and saturation on any color we want. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the purples and magentas and I'm just, they're not doing anything for me. I wanna get rid of all of those. So what I need to do in these two color sections is just bring that saturation right down purple and magenta, and just get rid of those colors completely. Right, so now we've got the dark blue. So if I hit on that dark blue, now with the dark blue, I wanna start shifting my blues and my greens to turquoise. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hue shift this a little bit, maybe around there. There you go. I'm gonna start to get some turquoise into that photo. I'm also gonna bring down the saturation, maybe quite a bit, maybe around, 60 or something like that and then also bring down the luminous to maybe 16 minus 16 there you go now we're going to move on to the light blue section you look at this photo man there's still a lot of green in this in that sign in the top left or in the tv screens you can see so i'm just going to completely remove the saturation on that one now we move on to the green section now again i just want to get rid of some of the green so i'm going to actually saturate this down to minus 100, completely get rid of the green in the photo. Right, now we're gonna move on to the yellows. So if I hit those yellows, I wanna start getting a bit of orange in here because I'm going for that classic orange teal movie look. I mean, if you look on most movies these days, it's got that orange and teal vibe going on. So that's what we're gonna try and do here with these yellows. And I'm gonna shift these to maybe around there. You can see at the top there, we're starting to get a little bit of orange in that photo. But I'm gonna dial down that saturation slightly. There you go, it's starting to look a little bit more cinematic. Now we're gonna move on to the orange and red. So I'm gonna tap on that orange one right there. I'm actually gonna shift the oranges to red slightly, maybe 20 or something like that, or maybe a little bit more. 
yeah, maybe around there. And I'm also going to increase the saturation just a touch and the luminous maybe a little bit around about 19. There you go. That's starting to look a little red. I know, no, no. But we're going to hit that red section next. So let's tap on that red section. Now we're going to put some orange back in. So I'm going to jump the hue up to around 20 and then we're going to desaturate. So I'm going to take that saturation and I'm going to drop it right down to minus 100. And then maybe reduce those limiters down to maybe 25. Now we go back to the light section and now we're going to do some light adjustments. I've got the colors roughly where I want them. They're looking very washed out at the moment, but we will fix all of it. What we're going to do is we're going to pump a whole lot of contrast in this photo and I'm going to pump this right up to around 59, something like that, 60, yeah, 59. Now we're going to take the highlights out and now we're going to take the whites out. There you go. Now we've got the orange back in there. We start to get a little bit of that darkness in that photo. I'm going to get more darkness. I'm going to pull those blacks back even further. Start darkening up the edges a little bit more, maybe 30, maybe a bit more. But I'm going to get to about 50, something like that. Yeah. So now you can see now we've got a lot of darkness around the edge, start to feel a little bit menacing, but we're losing a little bit of detail. So I'm going to add some shadows in so we can start to bring the subject back a little bit, maybe around there. And the thing with the light tab is you might pop in, pop out as you're doing adjustments, you're going to adjust in other sections. What we're going to do now is we're going to come out of light and we're going to go back into color. And this time we're going to go to grading. Now this is where the magic happens because we want to get that cinematic look. Now, as I mentioned before, these movies, they tend to have this kind of really bluey teal look in the photos, but it's like a dark casted look. And we can achieve this easily in the grading by adding some blues and maybe some greens in those shadows and midtones. So at the moment, I'm in the shadows. I'm just going to drag this down to the blue slightly, maybe around there. And already, we're starting to see some bluey teal in those dark areas in a photo. Now, if we hit on the mid-tones, maybe just a touch of green in there, just to complement it, just a little bit, maybe there. There you go, not too much, just a little bit. And then in the highlights, we're gonna get some blues in there, but maybe some lighter blues. There we go. So now we're getting some great orange and teal in that photo. I'm actually gonna go on the overall tab and I'm gonna add a little bit of blue there. Now look at that guys, we've added in some blues, some greens, and teal into those shadows and mid-tones and uh, yeah, it's looking good, but it's looking cinematic. Before we move on, man, if you're getting some value out of this video, please hit the like button, subscribe, do all that stuff. It helps me out and I want to continue to create great content for you guys. So we're in the effects tab now, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in some clarity. This photo is gonna need it because the quality is bad. Now you can see that that clarity is kind of made it a bit worse. We can add some grain to this. Now, not too much, maybe around there. What that's doing is it's, it's giving it that older feel, that older feel, and it's compensating against some of that clarity that we've got on there. And we do have some color bleeding. I'm gonna sort that out in a bit. So I think what we're gonna try and do now is we go to detail. We're gonna add a little bit of sharpness back into the photo, maybe around there, maybe increase the detail slightly. We're getting a bit noisy here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in some noise reduction. There. There you go. That's looking pretty good now. With the quality of this photo, don't go over the top with some of these things. I'm getting away with it here with this, but some photos that you might have, you might not get away. And this is where you got to use your judgment. I mentioned earlier that there was a lot of color noise. There's a lot of bleeding between the colors. And we made some heavy adjustments to try and save this photo. One trick that you can do, and I wouldn't recommend doing this, but with this photo, I think we're going to get away with it. The color noise reduction. I'm going to actually increase that all the way there you go you can see now around the arms we've actually got away all the bleed and stuff has now come away and then the color if i go back you can see here there we go what we have lost is the tattoo that's we, we can't save that tattoo with this photo but if we have more time we could go into photoshop put a tattoo back in there but you know what for the purpose of this video it doesn't matter let's pop over to the masking section and make some masks adjustments i mean let's just do a before and after i'm just going to tap and hold on there look at that look at the difference in the adjustments we've made it 
just looks so cinematic. Uh, you know what, I will stop saying that word at some point. But anyway, we're gonna do some mask adjustments. Now, what we're gonna try and do is draw out that subject now. it's We've made a lot of adjustments, but that subject is looking very dark. And what we can do here now is we tap on this plus icon. I can now hit select subject. And it's gonna select the subject and does a really good job of this on Lightroom Mobile as well. And I'm gonna make some local adjustments here. So we're gonna increase the exposure maybe to around 40. Drop up that contrast a bit as well there. Yeah, that's looking good. And what I think we'll do is we increase the shadows a bit as well, just a tiny bit, bring out some of the detail. But you can still see that we've got a bit of a problem on the face there. So what we're gonna do here, click on that plus, go to radial. Now what I can do now is just draw a little radial and move it over to the area that I want to adjust right there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change the color balance. I'm going to bring it up to around there. I'm actually going to increase it slightly and then bring down saturation slightly there you go now nah, it's looking pretty good now i'm gonna do a couple more adjustments here so i'm gonna come out of that now go to mask and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do this linear gradient filter and i'm gonna put one at the top so i want to really get rid of that top light and bring the light down a little bit in the top so i'm gonna drop the exposure slightly at the top I really want to get that subject in there make that subject pop a little bit so i'm gonna bring down the highlights as well drop the shadows a little bit, give it that more darker, mysterious look. And there you go, that's looking pretty good. We can make some more adjustments right here. Look, I'm looking at this photo, I'm thinking it's looking great at the moment, but the table is still too distracting. On the bottom left, we can still see some stuff going on. And also, there's just too much of that table. I wanna, I wanna kind of draw it into the subject a little bit more so your eye is drawn to the subject. And hit on mask, and we're gonna do another linear gradient filter. And then I'm just gonna do that. Go to light, I'm gonna drop the exposure slightly. There you go, see? And then those shadows as well, and highlights. And there you go, we've, we've now edged off that table so it's not as distracting. Your eyes not kind of wandering to that bottom left. It's bottom right, we're gonna do another linear mask right there as well. So I tap on that plus linear, uh, just around there. And we're gonna bring down maybe the blacks on that slightly and highlights as well. You can see I still got a little bit of something there in the corner. Maybe I could probably just fix that with the crop. So I'm going to go back to the crop. I'm just going to crop that out a little bit more. There you go guys. Oh look at that. How did we do it? We just saved this photo. Pretty impressive. When we gave it that movie look, when we got that teal, we got orange in there. And you know what? There is something that we can do. A little bonus tip to take this to the next level. And we could truly make this cinematic. Right, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna export this to the camera roll. And then I'm gonna open up Photoshop, PS Express. So now we're in Photoshop, I'm gonna hit on Combine Photos. So I'm gonna select the photo that I just exported. I'm gonna add some texture to this photo. We're gonna really make it look like a movie photo. And I'm thinking, you know what? I get a bit of a smoky vibe, misty vibe in there. So I'm gonna tap on this plus icon and I've got here a PNG smoke overlay. Now you can get this from anywhere. There's loads of free ones out there. I use for paid for service for these kind of things. Here we go. We're gonna spin that around slightly. Uh, put it at the top. I want that smoke to be at the top. Just not too harsh. So I'm gonna make it a bit bigger. There you go. I'm gonna bring that transparency down. There you go. And you see, look at the transformation there. Wow, that is looking amazing. Look at that. Let's export that now. Save. And there you go. Cinematic. This is how powerful a smartphone is. When you're on holiday, when you're out and about, you can quickly take photos, but please use a decent iPhone, man. Don't use an iPhone 4S, use an iPhone 14 or iPhone 13 Pro. Also get some lenses. And if you want to learn more about how to use lenses or why lenses are great for your iPhone, you want to check out this video. I'm going to talk to you about that in a little bit more detail. And I'll see you guys in the next one.